And one board member, Florida CFO Jimmy Petronis, seems to have a specific idea of where that personal life should be conducted because there is one question that he asks a lot. Y'all go to church? Y'all go to church? Y'all go to church again? Ma'am, where y'all go to church? You go to church and go to church? Do you go to church? Now, if the answer to that question is important, that is fucked up. And if it's not, why are you constantly asking it? Either you are factoring religious habits into your evaluation of whether someone should be able to vote, or you're making a list of people's houses that would be easy to rob on a Sunday morning, <laughs> and neither is a good use of the panel's time. And once you jump through all of these hoops, your fate is in the hands of a panel who do not have to explain their reasoning to you. Just watch Leon Gillis. He had served time for robbery and drug convictions, but had been clean for eight years and was running a drug rehab program when he made his case to the board in 2011. Rick Scott actually commended him for the progress that he'd made and then said this. So at this point, I'm going to deny restoration of civil rights. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. How long is that? I'm not sure. I, um, you know, it, um, I think every, every case is different. Well, what should I do with my life then? If I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, and I'm trying and I'm making sure that I do the right thing I'm supposed to do, then how long am I supposed to wait? I can't tell you the, that answer, but if, if at today I'm not, uh, I don't feel comfortable doing it. Okay. Thank you, sir. And that was it. He refused to restore someone's civil rights without demonstrating much more of a reason than, I don't know, I guess I'm just not feeling it right now. And the thing is, even if this process was perfect, which it is not, it can't handle the volume. The, the panel only meets, meets four times a year, and there are too many cases for them to review. Also, while Scott's predecessor restored the voting rights of over 155,000 people in his four-year term, Scott is only averaging around 400 a year. And that is meaningful, especially in a state where elections tend to have very narrow margins. Trump only won Florida by 100,000 votes. And President Bush famously won it by just 537. But there are actually, there's actually some genuinely good news here. Florida has a chance to fix this, a real chance. There is a constitutional amendment on their ballot this November that would bring Florida in line with many other states. If it passes, people with felony convictions, except in the cases of murder or sex crimes, would get the right to vote after completing their sentence. That could give as many as 1.4 million people the right to vote. But it is by no means a foregone conclusion. The amendment needs a 60% majority to pass. So if, it, if it's okay with everybody, I would like to...